Let's turn our attention now to RoughWorks. RoughWorks is a wonderful resource to help you manage and organize your citations. So as you retrieve journal citations and abstracts from the various databases, you can export selected items and citations into RoughWorks. There are other similar products such as EndNotes um, that you may be using already, and if that's the case, that's fine. But here at SIUE, we do support RoughWorks. So here at Lovejoy Library and also the Writing Center, uh, we can provide support in how to use RoughWorks. So if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. Um, to use RoughWorks, you'll have to establish an account. To establish that, just click under the Books, DVDs, and, and More search box. If you do not have a RoughWorks account, <coughs> click <coughs> and you'll have a form open up. I already have an account and I've logged in already, so this is what happens. But if, if you did not have an account yet, it would give you the registration form. Just go ahead and fill that out. And this is what you'll ultimately see. Now, I work with various subject areas. The most recent uh, set of articles I imported were from a criminal justice uh, database. And you can see off to the side that I have folders on various other topics. So, I think it's always easiest to use RoughWorks once you've created a folder. So, I would start with an EBSCO database. It's one of the easiest databases to use. So, you could, uh, if we go to Academic Search Complete, we were using that database earlier. We do our Itzhak Perlman search, and go to scholarly articles. These should be a little longer. Some of these are not real lengthy, but just for the sake of demonstration, if I wanted to put these into my RoughWorks account, I would select them, go to my folder, select them again. You have one last chance to change your mind. And be, whereas before we emailed the records to ourselves, this time we will export. I save the items to be exported. And since I've already opened my RefWorks account, which I usually do when I know I want to use RefWorks, I will open that and just minimize it on my screen. Um, I'm going to view my last imported ones, and now instead of my criminal justice articles, I now have the Itzhak Perlman articles. Now I can create a new folder for that. Oops, have to select. It does tell you when you do something wrong, so you have to select the items you want to put in a folder. And this is easier than when. It, it first came out, to trust me. <laughs> I'm going to create a folder. It's a promo. And it's now loaded those items to the Itzhak Perlman folder. Now the beauty of this product is when you go to create a bibliography. So I can click Create Bibliography, and at this point I can select which citation style I want these to appear in. I'm going to use the APA 6th edition at this point, and Create Bibliography. It tells me it's been completed. To see them, I click, and there it is. Boy, that took a long time, didn't it? <laughs> uh, so if you are assigned a paper and you have 10 or 20 references that you'll need to provide, that is a, a great reason to use a, a, a source such as RoughWorks. Um, and again, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to meet with you, um, or you can email us through the Ask a Librarian chat service, and we'll be happy to, to work with you and help you through. Next, I'd, I'd like to show you how to access some of our more specialized music resources. To do that, 
Let's use the A to Z list, one of the quick links on the left side of our library homepage. So if you click on A to Z, remember it's going to bring up our subject guides first. So let's go to the Fine Arts and Communications e-resources list. And an important resource is Grove Music Online. This is a good first place to go for music information. We also have a print version in the music area of the Research Commons here on the first floor of the library, but it's, it's easy to search from home as well. So if you want to search Grove Music Online, we've been searching about Percy Granger. We'll type Percy Granger in the box. And here is the first Grove Music Online article. It will highlight the, ter the terms that you type in your search. Um, these, are, these articles are written by scholars familiar with the musician. You can also find articles about, about types of music. At the end of the article, you can find uh, a bibliography of other resources about Percy Granger. They also list sources of that composer's works. So it's a very useful uh, reference tool source. You can also go quickly to a, s a section on online by clicking on one of these hyperlinks. If you're dealing with a major composer such as Beethoven, Mozart, Bach, you'll find extensive work lists which are also very useful um, when doing research on a particular musical composition. You can email the article to yourself, print it, and you can cite it. They do give you citation styles in different, different formats as well. Another very useful database for music is Naxos. Naxos Music Library and Naxos Music Library Jazz are streamed music databases. So while we have 8,000 or so music CDs that you're welcome to come and check out from the music area of the library, you can also stream music performances um, here as well. So if I were to type in Percy Granger, Naxos Music Library is dedicated to more classical performances of music. And Naxos Music Library Jazz, of course, as you might expect, covers jazz performances by major lab labels, Shandos, um, many of those here, represented by Percy Granger. Uh, you could also put a specific composition title in here. Here's one on piano music. You can see the performers. Um, select the selections you're interested in listening to. You can select all if you want. If many of these have the program notes available as PDF um, articles, especially if it's a Naxos recording, they'll provide all of the liner notes for the CD jacket um, that come with it, but that, that's not consistent with all of the items. Then you say play selections, it'll open in a new window. So you want to make sure, make sure that your pop-ups are enabled in order to, to listen to these and that your audio uh, functions are, are also in working. Okay, so then you just click the play button and it should, should play. So a very, very uh, helpful resource for musicians, certainly. Uh, you can, as long as you have an internet connection and your pop-ups are enabled, you can use this source. LexisNexis Academic is another database that can be useful to you, um, especially for more international um, or national newspaper searching. It is our largest set of newspaper databases. Uh, it's our largest source of newspaper articles that we offer here in Lovejoy Library. Let me show you how to get to LexisNexis. LexisNexis is a great resource and it's our largest resource for newspaper information. It covers many national and, and international newspapers. So I would go to the 
A to Z list, select L, and here it is near the top. It also is our largest source of legal information. So any of you interested in copyright um, or business information, um, it's a, it's, it is the legal source to, to go to um, for that. When you search, so you can search for news by a legal case, either its popular name or the actual case name, or company information. For, so for those of you interested in music business, this database is helpful on various fronts. To search by news, you can put in um, topic. You can search blogs broadcast transcripts, uh, wire services. Uh, I don't know of any other database that covers these sorts of um, communication sources. So, and that can be very helpful in music. For newspapers, you can select, uh, it does cover the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. So if you wanted to search recent articles, you could do that. It will give you the full text, but it will be in HTML, which means it will be just typed information. Um, it will not give you the images that accompany the text, which is different from the historical New York Times. So depending on your, your needs, um, here are some results dealing with copyright. Okay. And this one seems to have gone not, you can scope it to just the post-dispatch. This one's giving additional, the first ones are St. Louis post-dispatch. And this case here tells you the citation information. So if you wanted to go back to the microfilm, which we offer, uh, you could see the actual with this information. There are 408 words. You can print this or save it to a flash drive, email it to yourself, and so on. Okay. I'd like to conclude by sharing some of our special resources that Lovejoy Library has created that are music related. Um, I've been involved in developing some of these with colleagues, and it's it's a it's a labor of love. It takes a lot of work, but hopefully. Um, some of these will be useful to you, or you can sh share this information with others who you think may enjoy them. If we go under uh, Special Collections and Archives, you can get to our digital LIS, Digital Collections and Exhibits, and two that are music-related um, include the Camwalks Popular Sheet Music, collection, right next to our Sullivan Ornaments digital collection. And then the other one is um, the Coal Cut collection. I passed it up the first time. Both of those are sheet music collections. This one, the Coal Cut collection, was sheet music that was collected, most of which came from the 1800s, dated from the 1800s. And in 2013, we went ahead and recorded some of them, and they are also linked now to YouTube. So if you're interested in seeing what that is, what those sound like, um, some of those 1800s uh, sheet music titles are now accessible through YouTube which then link back to this, to this collection. If you wanted to view them um, here, you can browse, and it gives you the images of the various works. If there is audio, you can see that quickly here. A, a, a recent edition is the Mississippi, uh, actually, we have something on the Mississippi River Festival, which took place during the 1960s to 1980. Various musicians came to campus, um, uh, mostly popular musicians, but it started with the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra um, holding concerts on campus here, um, kind of like a Blossom Festival that Cleveland offered. 
Um, so it's, that goes back in SIU's history as well. And there's also a, a bit of music in the Rivers of America uh, digital collection. So look these over. Um, another one that I particularly like if you are walking on campus are the plants of SIUE. So if you're trying to identify something, check that out as well. For you, you miss it, those of you who are uh, interested in jazz, we have the National Ragtime and Jazz Archive here at SIUE. If you are interested in any of these materials, please contact me. Uh, Doug Meyer also can assist with these materials. And we have an oral history collection. Musicians, jazz musicians from the area have been interviewed and their accounts are, are fascinating. Uh, give insights to how jazz music developed here along the river um, in the early part of the 1900s. We also have the music special collections. Let me go back. Sorry. Here's our contact information, office numbers, music special collections that we offer. Uh, John Kendall, a former emeritus professor here, helped start the Suzuki Music Method here in the United States. We have his materials. Ruth Lenchenska, uh, prodigy pianist, child prodigy pianist, who is now um, in her 90th year. Uh, has her materials here as well. We have the KMOX sheet music collection that was used by the KMOX orchestra uh, back in their 1930s through 1950s um, and, and more. The last element I'd like to share with you is about our institutional repository called SPARC. To get to SPARC, the easiest way I think is to go to our LibGuides uh, once you get, they're listed under research guides. Once you get there, you can type in SPARC, as you would expect, like a SPARC, SIUE SPARC, Scholarly Publications and Repository of Knowledge. Um, these are meant to be open access resources, um, and we've been adding materials to SPARC throughout the year. Um, our archivist has been adding a number of documents uh, pertaining to the university's history. And so you, you may discover that some of your faculty members are, have already included articles that they've written. Um, the state of Illinois has an open access policy, so faculty members are highly encouraged to include articles that they've published um, starting this year, starting January of 2015. So, this is just something to be aware of, and um, I encourage you to take a look at it at some point, um, just as an, as an example. There is a collection about Charlie Cox, who is the campus photographer, um, as one of the more visually appealing uh, exhibits on Spark. Okay, and with that, I just want to recap, you now should know how to search for book information locally in our UFIND catalog through the iShare system for our statewide holdings and know how to request a book through iShare. I've shown you how to use WorldCat. We've talked about searching for journal articles um, using the Articles, Journals, and More tab. Um, you can get to many of these easily through the A to Z list or use a research guide or LibGuide to help guide you to the appropriate databases. Uh, remember that the Fine Arts and Communications Subject Guide links, lists many of those uh, easily for you as well. We've talked about the value of exporting citations from databases into RefWorks. We've talked about interlibrary loan um, using ILLiad. Um, in the case of databases that do not provide the text of an, a journal, you can go through ILLiad um, to request an article. To re 
and they'll be sent to you. So that's under our interlibrary loan services. Uh, we, and at the end, we've talked about some of the more specialized music resources. We've talked about Grove Music Online. Um, we've talked about Naxos, LexisNexis Academic, and the, LI, the Library and Information Services generated products, uh, digital LIS databases, digital collections, um, some that are also on our LIS YouTube channel. Uh, we've talked about Spark, the institutional repository. And probably more importantly than anything is how to contact us. Uh, don't ever hesitate to reach us. Um, we have the Ask a Librarian um, in email, instant messaging chat service from our, li our library homepage and through many of our LibGuides. Um, we'll also provide that contact information at the end of this program session. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please let me know.